Okay, in this video, we'll show you how to prepare and get the best from your response to question three on paper one of the AQA English Language GCSE. To do this, we'll be looking at extracts from a couple of student responses. So remember, you can pause the pod at any point if you need a little more time to read through what's on screen. So let's take a look at a sample question three. It asks you to look at the whole source, which in this case is an extract from a novel, and think about how the writer has structured the text to interest you as a reader. It can seem worrying when you're asked to look at the whole source, but remember this is only an eight mark question. What this means is that you can pick and choose your structural features from anywhere in the source, not just one small area. It doesn't mean you have to write about everything you see. Try to select around three key features that you feel confident you can write about. Remember, in the mark scheme for AO2, the bottom two bullet points deal with you showing your subject knowledge. This means finding structural features in the text and showing you know what they are through examples or line references. The top bullet point is where you show your reading skills. This is where you write about the possible impact or effect the feature has on you as you read the text. A good tip as you plan for this question is to divide up your source material into three sections and try to work with one structural choice from each section. That way, you'll have shown that you've considered the whole source. So, for example, in the first part of our sample text, you might pick the use of a third-person narrator, the reference to time, or the way the writer uses listing to describe the character's actions. Now, let's take a look at how two students have written up their three ideas. Remember, your answer can come from anywhere in the source. We'll start with an extract from student A's response. Press pause on the video now to give yourself time to read it through carefully, and press play again when you're ready. Here, the student has found some very relevant structural features and given clear examples, either by using quotations from the text or line references. For example, they've pointed out the third-person narrative perspective and used a direct quotation. He hung up his black beetle-coloured helmet to prove this. Then they move on to identify that some listing has been used to structure the text. In this case, they pinpoint the lines where this has been done, which is a good way to save time by not copying out a lengthy quotation. This response would be awarded a level three from the mark scheme. But could they have done a little more? Just as with paper one, question two, it's wise to think carefully and plan what you'll write for your comment, the top bullet point of the mark scheme, so you can aim for the full marks for the level. A good tip is to aim to spend about a third of your time planning and two thirds writing up. This can seem a little scary, but remember that you're working with source material that you won't have seen before, so you need to give yourself time to understand it to have the best chance of success. To show how this can be done, let's take a look at another example of a student planning, this time from the middle of the text. First, they've noted that the paragraph begins in an unusual way with the word whistling placed in the foreground. This gives them a chance to think about the effect of this in presenting Montag as relaxed at this point. By looking at the bigger picture, they notice a difference in the way the time shifts in the passage, from the past right into the present. Then the student hasn't just labelled the long sentence as complex, they've thought in advance about the impact of its length and how it seems to slow things down and create a rather spooky feeling of anticipation. This has allowed them to contrast this with the questioning and the short, simple sentence at the end, and then note the changes. We can see here that it's a good idea to give a good few minutes over to planning this task, as this student has a lot more to go on when writing up their answer. Let's take a look now at the difference this has made by looking at an extract from student B's response. Press pause on the video now to give yourself time to read it through, and then press play again when you're ready. Okay, rather than just identifying features, they've thought about where things are positioned within the extract to create impact and effect. For example, the foregrounding of whistling and the position of the questions. It's worth noting how this student has been efficient in the way they've written their examples too. Take a look at the use of ellipsis in these two quotations. By doing this, they've used relevant quotations from the text to support their ideas, but haven't wasted time copying out entire sentences. If you then look at the comments on effect, you can see that they're more developed and precise than student A's. For example, pointing out that Montag isn't just relaxed, but also sure of himself which shows the student is thinking more deeply about the impact of whistling. So by taking a little more thinking time, you can see that the student here has been able to present a more perceptive and detailed answer and secure themselves a level four on the mark scheme. 
we'll leave it there. Remember our top tips for success on this question. Plan before you write up. Think about where things are positioned within the extract to create impact and effect and use relevant, precise quotations. Why not try out Student B's planning approach for yourself? You can use the AQA-style exam paper attached to this pod or another example of source material. Good luck.